Joining us now is Senator Mark Warner, Democrat from Virginia, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee and a member of the Senate Budget Committee. Senator, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank Democrats you, have accepted Republicans' offer to bring up a short-term lift of the debt ceiling to allow the government to pay its bills at least through December 3rd. This could set up, as you know, another showdown over the holidays when Congress also has to fund the government. So why not figure out a way to do this now instead of kicking the can down the road? Well, Phil, you're right. We should have figured out a way to do it now. Uh, but what the Republicans were trying to do was force us to use a kind of arcane process called, called reconciliation that would have taken about two weeks. And the problem when you get close to violating the full trust to, and confidence of the American government in terms of the debt ceiling is that you could have had any one of the rating agencies put our country, in a sense, on credit watch any time over the next few days. Uh, and the absurdity of that would be you know, that would have been enormous harm to our economy. So we were in very dangerous ground. Um, clearly, we're going to revisit this in December, um, but we ought to go ahead and move it till after the next election. We don't know who's going to be in control of the Congress after the next election. We ought to, at that point, get rid of this whole debt ceiling. There is no other industrial country in the world that has such a potentially divisive and self-inflicted wound. And now that we have some sort of breathing room here, will Democrats take up this issue earlier by starting the budget process that could allow you to pass this with Democratic votes? Or do you think the Senate will be stuck in the same game of chicken at the end of November? Well, there have been plenty of other times, or most of the time, let's go back, let's look back under President Trump. We raised the debt ceiling three times. Uh, each time was done in a broadly bipartisan way. Again, both sides have run up this debt uh, under President Trump. The, the monies that we're spending now, most of this, uh, the debt ceiling that needs to be dealt with, are, again, are funds that were expended under President Trump uh, by both Democrats and Republicans. Usually, there is this joint responsibility. This has now been politicized by Leader McConnell. So when we come to December, I think we will start earlier to say how we don't get into this danger zone. Again, my hope is we could include a, a elimination of this, uh, frankly, um, crazy requirement, um, because it is nothing but a political tool used by both parties to extract the pound of flesh without a meaningful policy debate. So particularly when the, the effect, if we were to violate the debt ceiling, if we were put into jeopardy the full faith and credit of the United States, it would have both national security and hugely catastrophic economic consequences. I do want to ask you about the ongoing sure. talks over President Biden's Build Back Better agenda. What do you make of Senator Manchin insisting this week that this package has to be downsized? I mean, already uh, you've said the $3.5 trillion package falls short on housing assistance. Well, I think the truth is that we're going to, uh, to get this package through with 50 votes, we're going to need Senator Manchin. And, and Senator Manchin and I are good friends. Um, I think we're going to see this package probably come in a lot closer to $2 trillion than $3.5 trillion. That being said, I hope we will, frankly, narrow some of the areas so that you know, we really deliver for the American public, whether it's in dr bringing down drug prices, whether it's providing child care, whether it's providing more affordable housing. Let's try to do a few things well. The original proposal was extraordinarily broad. There were close to 15 new initiatives. That would have been hard no matter how much money we would have committed. So at a smaller package, let's come together, uh, and the, the Democrats in the Senate pass this, um, and allow as well then the passage of something that I was very involved in, the bipartisan infrastructure bill that does have broad-based Republican support as well, because uh, that one is actually even more popular than what we're talking about on the Build Back Better agenda. Right, juggling a lot in Washington these days. I, I want to ask you, do you feel like your moderate colleague, Senator Manchin and Cinema? have too much power at the moment? I mean, Senator McConnell called them directly the other day. We, we understand. Listen, this is the this is about uh, democracy. We've got 50 votes. Uh, I think my friend Joe Manchin said to some folks, well, progressives should go out and elect more senators. Um, you know, it, with 50 votes, every one person can allow things to move forward or stop them. So as somebody that, though that is 
on the finance committee and on the budget committee in, in the midst of all these negotiations, I think we'll get there. Listen, I would have much rather have had even done the child care issue, the bringing down drug cost issue, the, the issue around you know, paid family medical leave or around affordable housing. I wish we could have done that in a bipartisan way. I wish my Republican po- colleagues would have helped us on that because um, I think then that would that would take away any one senator's uh, maybe too much excessive power. Investigators uh, into the January 6th Capitol riot. As a committee chairman, your committee chairman, what is your response to reports that President Trump's top aides are going to defy House subpoenas and records and documents related to January 6th? As someone who was on the floor of the Senate on January 6th when the insurrectionists took over the Capitol, the idea that uh, former President Trump is trying to still direct his uh, minions um, to not adhere to legal subpoenas, shows his disrespect for the law, he shows his disrespect for democracy, and uh, it shows again, if Donald Trump didn't have his hands and fingerprints all over the insurrection of January 6th, why wouldn't he let his, his aides test, testify? Uh, I think when the facts fully come out, you will see that, uh, that Trump was not only urging them on in his speechifying on January 6th, but probably was more deeply involved than even some of us can imagine. All right, Senator Mark Warner of Virginia. A lot to talk about, a lot going on in Washington, a lot of important issues for the American people. Everybody hoping Democrats and Republicans uh, can get together on some of it. Thanks so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Phil. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.